体とは She realized suddenly that she couldn't talk about the Furies openly with so many people around. Instead, she simply mumbled, at a loss for words. He must have guessed what she was getting at, and looked at her for a second or two before responding. There wasn't much she could say in response to that. Perhaps he wasn't feeling anything yet because he had only just been turned into a fury. He might well end up suffering the same painful symptoms in the future. Still, even if he did, she had no doubt that he would remain as stoic as ever and insist that everything was fine. Even the mere thought of it made her heart feel as if it would break. The atmosphere in the castle was certainly restless. Even as she watched wounded soldiers being carried in. Oh, oi! So go near not there. Moshkis the Saitoga? Ya put a Saitoga. Nanda, oh my, you get it on my own. Ma Saitomo, Shimpatini da Kiwa, you are at a Kuneda Rona. He grinned. Saito's mouth thinned, but he said nothing. There was no way Nagakura could have known the true reason for Saito's apparent good health. For a man like Saito, someone with absolute faith in his sword and his skill, to admit weakness and reach for the water of life, she could only imagine how torturous it must have been. Saito Kumicho! Yukimura Kun! Buji datta n desne! Ya, yo gatta! Shiroju sagashte mo sugata ga miyatara na gatta no de, moshi ya to motta n desu ga. He quickly scrubbed tears from his eyes with a fist and smiled at them. Ah. His expression suddenly turned grim. Harada spoke up, but his voice was strained. Yamazaki was shot in the gun and was shot. I'm going to show you to Matsumoto. But I'm going to show you a lot of high heat. I'm going to show you how far I'm going to show you. She felt her stomach clench with dread. I know I had to be all right. He had to. They were supposed to laugh it off, to smile and reassure her, and say that I knew it was fine. But they didn't. It was Nagakura who fondly spoke. Gensama, Naganata. Harani dekai juice or a dictatessa. Dabu, Sokshi datta dom. Her throat tightened and she could feel tears rising in her eyes. Nagakura 
長倉君や島田君そして斎藤君は今の世には珍しい本物の武士だ武士というのは男というのは決して女の子を悲しませたりはしないものだよだから大丈夫だ Indoi. She thought a samurai would never do anything to make a girl sad. So why? Why did he die? She swallowed and her throat stung. It was horrible enough to think of the pain he'd suffered from his bullet wound. But even worse was the despair he must have felt as he realized his life was coming to an end. To be honest, I'm going to go to the end. 生き残っている人間は集まっているはずだから。She wiped her tears away and followed. サイドそれに彼女も生きてたのか心配かけてしまって申し訳ございません。副長。He bowed politely. とりあえず、生き残ったカンブレンチはこれで全員揃ったわけだな。そうなるな。夢も希望もねえ作戦会議としゃれ込むか。いや、覚悟して聞いた方がいいぜ。俺も、聞いた瞬間は頭から魂が抜けて、どっかに飛んでっちゃいそうだったもん。シンパジー口の聞き方に気をつけろ、まあ、結論から言うと今回爆軍はかなりの苦境に立たされてる Saito had told her that the shogunate forces numbered nearly 15,000 men and that the Satsuma, Choshu and their allies commanded at most 5,000 Even she knew three to one was good odds. So, how had the shogunate ended up in trouble? Julie's Dadoka Wagano Garam Koto Nugashti, Tengun no Yose or Kotoaru Hanga Oktena. Shimpa. Sorry. Tokuma Kino Shinseki Niataru has no worry, Ham Madega. He or Miki Megon, the Julie's Hau Nanoriangata. 戦争が始まってんのに中立もクソもねえだろはっきり倒幕側だって名乗らねえあたりがなんとも姑息だよな戦況はそんなに悪かったんですかサッチョの連中が化け物みてえに遠くまで届く新型の銃を使ってやがってなこっちの射程の外から撃たれちまうんでどうにも防ぎようがねえおまけに連射機能付きだから懐に飛び込む隙もねえときたもう刀じゃ戦争はできねえってことだな<笑>サイト looked down and said nothing He'd built his life around the sword and now just like that it meant nothing しかも敵方は銀の弾丸を使っていました羅折隊対策に決まってるじゃん向こうにも俺たちのことをよく知ってるやつがいるんだよ羅折は並々ならぬ回復力を有していますが銀の弾丸でつけられた傷だけは癒すことができません我々の武器は人並み外れた運動能力と回復力ですそれがなくなってしまえばただの人間と変わりがない今回の戦で、羅折隊の連中もほとんど殺されちまってさ、途方に暮れてるとこなんだ。That was when Saito finally spoke. 副長、ご報告したいことがあります。うん
Nanda, Saito. Saito looked straight into the commander's eyes and spoke in a calm, level voice. I was a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of Every face in the room turned to Saito, shocked. Why did you do that? I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Hijikata was silent for several moments. That was all he said. あなたは素晴らしい決断をしましたよ、斉藤君。ようこそ、こちら側へ。Something about Sunai's smile. Heisuke, on the other hand, looked away. His eyes sad. よし、とりあえず現状報告も終わったところで、荷物をまとめてくれ。これから船で。their faces fell when she spoke. Oratashino Inoue had died, and Yamazaki had been wounded. Though they were the only ones she knew, she had little doubt that many other men had fought for the Shogun and been wounded or killed. And instead of saying, staying to support his army, he'd abandoned them to their fate and been the first to run to safety in Edo. It was awful. He repeated the words to himself, almost as if he couldn't quite bring himself to believe them. Hijikata shrugged. No. He nodded, his face as placid as ever, but in his eyes, she could see defeat and despair. January 8th, they retreated by ship from Osaka Bay. Yamazaki's wounds didn't heal properly. He grew worse during the voyage, and eventually passed away. He was buried at sea. Kondo's shoulder hadn't fully healed, but he got out of bed to read a memorial passage in memory of Yamazaki, and his service to the Shinsengumi. Tears rolled down his face as he read. Inoue was dead, and now so was Yamazaki. Their friends were dying off one by one. Saito still had his life, but he had been forced to sacrifice his humanity for it. And her own father had created the water of life that had turned him into a fury. There had been sadness enough already, but the lead in her stomach said that it was only the beginning. Ooh, chapter five. February 1868. They arrived safely in Edo and were ordered to set up new headquarters in one of the Hadamaro mansions. They heard rumors everywhere about the Satsuma Choshu Alliance. She tried not to think about their loss at Tobi Fushimi, but the events insisted on replaying themselves in her mind. Heisuke and Sanan had been busy, working to strengthen the Fury Corps after its near destruction. She wasn't sure how they planned to strengthen it, 
but she wasn't entirely sure she wanted to know. More frustrating, however, was that she felt utterly useless. On a day just past the middle of February, she heard voices carried by the wind as they slipped through the gaps in the door. They were chanting, Isn't it great? over and over. They'd been in Edo for nearly a month by then. She gazed out the window and thought back on what had happened. Yeah, ま、何もかも忘れて踊り狂いたくなるのも分からなくはねえよ。明日にも薩長が攻めてくるかもしれねえって5時生だもんな。佐野も踊りに行ってくるか。腹の傷に顔描いて踊れば大注目間違いなし
He'd become a monster that night. She'd seen it with her own eyes. No stop. His expression had changed. His eyes were fixed to the blood beaded on her fingertip. The color drained from his face, and his eyes looked strange. He shuddered and shook his head, then turned away. To a bystander, it might have looked like he'd returned to his work as if nothing had happened, but... His forehead was slick with sweat. His reaction was not that of a normal, healthy person. Her stomach dropped as she understood what it was. His shoulders twitched. He turned and glared at her. Orega He gave her the same flat, unblinking look she'd seen many times before, whenever she'd asked what he thought to be an obvious question. His voice said that that was the end of the conversation. And he fell accordingly silent and returned to his ink. He wasn't sure what to say, so she simply sat there for a few moments, staring at his back before she returned to her work. Later that night, she waited until it was time for Heisuke to wake up, then went to find him. Be She nodded. She wanted to tell him what had happened that afternoon, but she wasn't sure how to put it into words. How did you talk about something like that? She kept her mouth shut, but the look on her face must have told him. Heisuke seemed reluctant to answer. After all, to answer it would only serve to remind him that he was no longer truly human. She didn't want to make him do anything he didn't want to do. But Heisuke was the only person she could talk to about Saito. I'm 
肉体的な意味でなら飲んだ方が楽あのさこれあげるよコードさんが身分に残してった資料を見て松本先生が調合してくれたんだこれを飲めば一時的にだけど吸血衝動を抑えられるはずだよまああでも発作がひどくなると効かなくなってくるからあくまでもその場しのぎでしかないってことは覚えておいてくれよな<音楽>そんじゃ俺用事があるからそろそろ出るよ。Then stopped as if he'd suddenly remembered something. あのさ、はじめくんのこと、気をつけてやってくれよな。俺とか三男さんは、自分が何をしたいのか、何をしなきゃいけないのかってのが見えてるからいいけど、はじめくんはさ、そういうのがなくて、自分が本当にやばい状態だってことにも気づかねえうちに倒れちまいそうな気がするから。エスケンなどで、ファンフィデントを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、それを知っていたので、Obedience was a valuable trait in a soldier, to be sure, but it was painful to watch him push his own life aside in favor of his duty. But the most painful thought of all was that Saito had become a fury to protect her. She felt like it was her responsibility to ease his pain. Heisuke had mentioned documents her father had left behind had allowed Dr. Matsumoto to create his medicine. Perhaps if she went back to her old house, she might find something else useful. She decided to go and look the next day. <laughs> 